Hey, what's going on guys? So today I wanted to talk about a new game that I found on Steam called Brass Brigade. So it's a single player World War II FPS that's kind of similar in tone to the Battlefield games, or at least the older ones, except you just play exclusively against bots. Now, I just want to say right off the bat, I was extremely impressed with this game as soon as I booted it up. I love this game. I've put around seven hours into the game already, which for me is a lot considering I just got it the other day. And this game has kept my attention and captivated me like no other game has in recent years. So as soon as you open up the menu, you'll notice the art styles of the game. It's kind of got like a cartoony, retro-y art style. And at first, when I saw that in the screenshots, I didn't think I was going to like it. In fact, that was one of the things looking at it, I thought that was going to be my least favorite part of the game. And I will admit, I was wrong. I love this game's art style. It just looks amazing. It kind of takes me back to the old days when I was playing with my little toy soldiers as a kid, which if you've watched my channel before, you'd know I was quite fond of. I uploaded the whole collection of them. But anyway, so you get to the main menu and you're greeted with a beautiful menu theme. The theme song is great. Whoever composed it deserves an award. I love it. And then you have a fairly simplistic menu until you go to set up your battles. In the battle setup, you have a whole bunch of options. You can customize how accurate the enemy bots are, how accurate your friendly bots are. You can customize how many bots there are, you can customize how aggressive they are, you can customize what faction you play as. There's just so many different options to tailor the experience exactly how you want it. Do you want to kind of lay back and just play casually and just enjoy mowing down lots of enemies? Well, you can do that. Set the bot awareness to basically zero. Or, if you want to be a bit more competitive and have a bit more of a tactical gameplay, you could set the bot awareness up to the max. And I just think this is really cool how they actually have sliders versus difficulty options, because I find that a lot of games with difficulty options for their offline modes, easy mode is usually way too easy, medium is usually too hard, and hard mode is just forget about it, you may as well just turn the game off. So, I really like the amount of customization right off the bat that you have in this. And another thing I had to mention, when I first got the game and I opened it up for the first time, I expected to have maybe 7, 8, maybe 10 maps at most. This game has somewhere around, I think it's 23 different maps. Now some of the maps are just remakes of other maps, like they might be like day and night versions of that map, but there's not too many of them. There's only like 4 or 5 of them, so no you're still getting 17 or 18 unique maps, and I think that that's pretty cool. So another thing that I have to mention about the maps is a lot of games that are based around World War II for one reason or another seem to think that World War II only happened in Western Europe. Not this game. This game has the African theater, the Pacific theater, the Western European theater, the Eastern theater, and it even has a couple of random, like, maps. Like, there's one map that takes place in Norway. Who would have even thought that that would be in a video game? It, it so rarely gets mentioned, but it is here in Brass Brigade. So, that was a nice touch. And then we go to playable factions. You can play as so many different countries in this game, and I love it. And not only do you get to play as these countries, but the weapons that you use are reflected by that. You know, you're not just using generic American and German weapons like you see again in most World War II games. No, you have weapons from France, you have weapons from Italy, you have weapons from Japan, all kinds of weapons, along with your standard World War II shooter, American and German weapons. So, the countries you can play as, you can play as America and Germany, of course, then you can play as Russia, you can play as France, you can play as Italy, and you can play as the Japanese. And I just think that's really cool, especially Italy and France. That's just, like, what? I don't think I've ever seen a World War II game cover those countries. So, I think that's pretty cool. And like I said, you have all different unique weapons. And funny enough, I had actually been to an armor museum fairly recently, just a couple of months ago. And a lot of the weapons in the World War II section of that museum, I'm seeing in-game. So it's kind of just a cool, I guess, crossover, if you want to call it. Just really was able to appreciate that. Now, moving on from the weapons, the weapon sounds are actually good. The sound design on this game, like I again, I didn't expect the fact that it had kind of a cartoony art style. I kind of expected little pitiful, you know, sounds that were just little cracks and snaps and whatever, but the weapons actually sound 
real. They actually sound good. They actually sound like something that's presentable and that sounds like it's got some power behind it. When I shoot at the enemies in this game, I actually feel like my weapons are doing some kind of damage. Not that they're just like these, you know, video gamey, very kitty down. Like, no, these feel powerful. And of course, the M1 Grand Ping, as it is in a lot of games, is just fantastic. In fact, it's probably one of my favorite ping sounds out of any game. Moving on from weapons, we have vehicles. So, the tanks in this game actually feel like tanks. I find that in a lot of FPS titles, usually because they want to balance them for multiplayer, they dumb tanks down, they make them easy to destroy, or they make them not very powerful. You know, the main cannon on them usually won't kill infantry very well. Not in this game. If you use a tank on a massive enemy infantry, their bodies will literally go flying. You can literally take out like 10 guys with one tank shell with this. So tanks are very important in this game, and I just love that. But that's not to say that they're indestructible. They can still be destroyed by other tanks. They can still be destroyed by anti-tank weaponry, which there is a whole plethora of. You don't just have your rocket launcher type of thing. No, you have your regular standard bazookas. You have even anti-tank rifles, which actually get used as anti-tank rifles. Now, I'm a big fan of Call of Duty World at War, and in that game you have the PTRS-01. I believe it's the 01, but you have the PTRS rifle, right? And in reality, that gun is made to be an anti-tank rifle, but in the game it was kind of basically shown off more as a sniper rifle, which in reality you would never use it as a sniper rifle, but in Brass Brigade, the anti-tank rifles are actually effective against tanks. And infantry, you can use them against infantry still, but just a cool little realistic touch to it that I thought was good to give it a little bit of variety. You also have things like dynamite, you have airstrikes, you have you know regular grenades, all kinds of little equipment that you can use on the battlefield to, you know, different roles and different things that you can do depending on what class of infantry you pick. Now, going back to tanks, there are actually, like there's a good variety of locations, factions, and weapons, there's also a good variety of tanks in the game. Again, another problem I see with a lot of World War II games is they tend to assume that the only tanks that existed were Panzer tanks, Tiger tanks, and Sherman tanks. This game has all, all of those. It has different variations of Sherman tanks. It has Panzers, it's got, I think it's got Tigers, it has... Churchill tanks, it has Crusader tanks, it has those weird French tanks that look pitiful and I don't remember their names. It also has anti-tank tanks, so it's got all kinds of things that you can get. They also have giant cannons and guns that you can get on and use against tanks or infantry, however you see fit. And I just think that's a really cool attention to detail that you don't see from many games nowadays, or really that you never saw. I've never seen a game put this much attention to detail in its, I guess, material, its historical material, and for a game that's 10 bucks and has a little cartoony art style, I have to say I was extremely pleasantly surprised. Now, the other thing I'd have to say is about the bots. The bots are, for the most part, pretty competent. They don't really get stuck in corners, they don't get stuck on, you know, the map, they don't tend to sit and you know, sit by themselves and do nothing. And now, I have seen that happen a couple of times, but when you're playing with 50 bots on each team, on massive maps, if you see two or three bots doing that, it's really not that big of a deal. Again, considering the game is just a $10 game, you really can't go wrong. And I just love it. Like I said, the bots are challenging. They're not total pushovers, but at the same time, they're not super, super accurate, crazy accurate. Although you can set them to be that if you want that. Uh, but I think it definitely has a good mix of fun gameplay and challenging gameplay. So, that being said, I do have a few gripes with the game, really only two major ones that I think do need to be fixed. However, I have seen, based on the Steam reviews and the Discord that the game will give you a link to when you get to the main menu, the developer seems to be relatively active and responsive. If there is a glitch, he kind of patches it not that long later, you know, a month or two later, and... There are free content updates with this game, in fact, I looked on the Steam page recently, and apparently only a month ago they added another map to the game, so I wonder what's to come. That being said, let's get into some of the issues. So this game was originally designed to be played in third person, but due to popular demand, they added a first person mode, which is great. I love it when game developers listen to their fan bases. The problem is, in first person mode, you can change your FOV. 
And if you change it anything above the default FOV, which I'm pretty sure is something like 50 degrees, it's very, very low. But if you change it above the default FOV, you have major visual issues. Like, you'll have your arm will be blocking your view, you'll see through your arm sometimes. If you go from third person to first person well moving, it really gets kind of wonky. And it just needs a little bit better support. I also feel like it doesn't show you enough of your weapon when you're in first person mode. It kind of seems like it just shows you the tip of your rifle. So, and it's worse with some guns than it is with other. That being said, I think that this is probably tied to the FOV issue and to the first person issue. When you play in first person mode, it doesn't happen all the time. But... Every so often, it'll happen, usually once per match, or once every couple matches. If the matches can last quite long, and I've been... Anyway. Your crosshair will not accurately display where your bullets will hit. And I think that's an issue with switching from third person to first person. I, I'm, I'm not really sure what causes it yet, but sometimes I just spawn in in first person, and it happens where I'll be going to shoot at somebody, especially further away, and my bullet will hit nowhere near them. So that's an issue that does need to be fixed. It's not game breaking. It doesn't prevent you from playing in first person mode at all. Like I said, it doesn't really happen that often. It's just when it does happen, it is quite annoying. Now, beyond that, now this, I don't know if this is a bug or not, or if this is intended, but if it is intended, I really, either ways, I think something should be done about it. On certain maps, like the Berlin map, there are areas that it looks like you could go. Like, there's just straight up some tank traps placed out or barbed wire, and then an open area between the tank traps and barbed wire. And there's just an invisible wall there. I don't know if that's a glitch, or if that's just bad map design, I guess. I don't know. But hopefully the developer can fix that, even if they just put some rubble down there, or... I'm not really sure about that. Um... The Berlin map kind of happens to be one of my least favorite maps, I think, so far of what I've played. Only because it doesn't have the Reichstag. I mean, if you've ever seen the historic photograph, it's very famous of the Soviet flag being raised over the Reichstag in Germany. You know what I'm talking about. And I just feel like to have a map that takes place in the fall of Berlin and not have the Reichstag there just seems like a huge missed opportunity. But I don't know, maybe that could be an issue with scaling. But that's very nitpicky. My big issue with it is the random invisible walls. And you'll actually see that in a couple of places throughout the game. Usually if there's rubble nearby, there, or if... I said the worst offender is that one part on the Berlin map. So anyway, the next issue I have is that sometimes, as I mentioned before, bots are generally pretty competent. But sometimes, for one reason or another, bots will just stand still. Like, they'll just stand still and do nothing. They'll stand at their capture point, and you'll literally pull up with a tank and start shooting at them, and they'll just stand still. I would assume that maybe this is my computer being overloaded with too many instructions being sent to other bots, or maybe it's an engine issue, I don't know, but hopefully that can get fixed just to make the game a little bit a little bit better. Uh, like I said, not that is a bit more of a nitpick, you know, when I have so many bots on the map, I guess I can't expect them all to run properly, but that's that. Now the last gripe I have with it, and this is probably the most major glitch, is that capture points don't work all the time. I've had this happen about three times. I've put about seven hours into the game now, and I've had this happen three or four times. Where I go to a capture point, I stand on it, and nothing happens. It doesn't get captured. The My flag does not get raised. The enemy flag does not go down. Nothing happens. So that that's really a big issue that needs to be fixed. But beyond that, I don't really have any problems with this game. A couple things I would say is for a suggestion, some features I would like to see... If the developer could add in jeeps or something that was a bit faster, jeeps or like motorcycles or something, although preferably jeeps, if the developer could add in jeeps to help us get around certain maps quicker, like especially the Battle of Kursk map or the El Al Mine map, both of those maps are very large and very open, and it's just really slow paced at times. So if he could add in jeeps or even half tracks, that would be fantastic. My next suggestion would be we need a map maker. Because I realize that that might be a bit difficult because some of the, you know, the bots might have trouble navigating new maps. But it would be so cool if we could have a map maker. And with that, Steam Workshop support would be great. And then on top of that, multiplayer would be nice. I know this game isn't meant to be a multiplayer game, and I would never want it to be. 
how like I, I you know I don't want to play against people. I think part of the beauty of this game is that you can play against bots and just kind of casually play and have a good time. I wouldn't want to play against people that play you know 25 hours a day, eight days a week, and then you just can never seem to do anything and you're just getting killed and you're at the respawn screen all the time. That's actually one of the reasons I bought this game because I just got frustrated with the over competitiveness of multiplayer games. But if they could allow us to just play with four to eight of our friends. That, for me, would make this game infinitely more enjoyable, and it's already extremely enjoyable. I lost time playing this game the other day. I started off playing, I think it was like 10 o'clock at night, and then I thought it was 10.30, and I looked at the clock, and it turned out to be 12.30 in the morning. So, again, I love this game, but multiplayer would be great. I already know a couple of people that would be interested in playing it if it had some kind of cooperative multiplayer or some kind of small-scale multiplayer where, you know, you can just have two of you playing together or three or four of you playing together and then everybody else is a bot. That would be a lot of fun, and I know that would be difficult to add, but that's just a suggestion. That being said, I highly recommend Brass Brigade. It's 10 bucks on Steam right now. Pick it up if you have the spare cash. It is definitely... I definitely don't regret buying it. Hopefully my mentioning of all the issues didn't dissuade anybody. Like I said, those are mostly minor issues. The capture point thing is the biggest, but it's a fantastic game. I highly recommend it. That being said, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like on it. If you want to see more content like this, subscribe. I'm probably going to be uploading another video about this game soon. And that's it. So have a good day. Stay safe as always. And thank you for watching. Goodbye.